Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Williams, Senior Editor at MGMA. We are live at the MGMA Leaders Conference. I am sitting here with Ahmed Donawala of Edge Health. Ahmed, welcome. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a pleasure and honor being here. Yeah, we have had you in a different environment. We've uh, talked via Zoom Correct. Uh, in a previous podcast. We actually got to meet today, just kind of bumped into each other. That's right. That's right. Realized I was going to be introducing you for a, for a talk. Now, you have a pretty interesting story that I want you to share with us about today. You, <laughs> you flew in today. So tell us about your itinerary um, as you're trying to get back to watch your beloved Raiders play today. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I... Uh, I had a flight this morning at a uh, 7:45 out of San Francisco, and uh, you know, got into town. Actually, re- landed here uh, roughly 12:15, and uh, leaving in uh, in six hours at, at 6 p.m. So we'll catch a little bit of the Raiders, but of course, wanted to uh, wanted to show face at an event that you know we're we're co-sponsoring um, with the speech we did, and so uh, yeah, excited to be here. It's a little strange knowing that. You know, we're not in the convention center at a booth, but, you know, hopefully next year we'll pick that right back up. Yeah, well, that is great. So we were ribbing each other just a little bit offline because your Raiders, my Broncos are playing today. That's right. That's so right. Do you have a prediction? Because the game hasn't, I don't think it's even started yet. So what are you thinking today? You know, life as a Raiders fan, you make a prediction only for it to not happen. <laughs> and you have to, you know, deal with what, what that comes with. Uh, I am praying for a Raiders win. I have a, a jersey underneath the suit. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but uh, hopefully, as long as it's a good game, I think yeah. both teams uh, could benefit from better offense. So as long as it's a not a slump fest, we'll we'll be good with it. I will agree with you on that. So talk to us then, because I just got to sit in on a conversation um, that you provided to our. MGMA attendees today. Yeah. So tell us about that. What were you talking about? What was that topic? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've, of course, everyone knows that burnout is affecting staff within healthcare, whether it be someone who's uh, patient facing in a front office role, leadership, physicians, everyone is affected by this. Um, ultimately, the the talk that I led speaks about a, a solution to that. And that is, you know, remote employment, remote hiring, uh, when the talent force in your local market has become rough, it's it's a it become very difficult to hire. It takes a lot of time, um, and there's no assurance that individuals will actually stay in these roles that you devote so much time to. The solution is, of course, remote employment, and, and that's what we spoke about. Yeah. So tell us about your organization. Um, tell us what you guys do and where your focus is there. Yeah, absolutely. So I represent Edge. Um, you know, we were founded basically right when COVID first came in 2020. And and ultimately, practices had no choice but to start hiring uh, remotely because uh, of, of, you know, everything that was going on. And so um, ultimately, at that point, you know, Edge pinpointed healthcare as the industry to, to really specialize in, you know, four years later, roughly, you know, being, being across roughly 600 organizations, a thousand plus individuals that are supplied to these organizations, um, individuals that come with at minimum a bachelor's degree, but ultimately those who are, who are really, really striving to do well in an opportunity that they're not afforded in their local hometown. So, you know, we've, we've been able to, to save roughly 50% of administrative task time, um, being able to really help individuals who are in practice actually be patient facing and not worry about phone calls, prior aughts, et cetera, and ultimately saving those health centers, you know, 50% plus on costs. Yeah. Well, I met you earlier this year. Yeah. You gave me a quick education on the yeah. kind of work that y'all do. I was blown away because when I talk to medical practices, what I hear over and over again is staffing shortages. Right. And you guys have found some pretty good solutions there. Talk about how you find um, these staff sources yeah. overseas, globally, wherever they might be. Yeah, absolutely. And and we really wanted to be a, a global partner to a healthcare organization. What we did, number one, is look at what positions were impacted uh, overseas. Specifically, if you look at Southeast Asia, physicians, dentists, individuals like nurses, uh, these are very saturated positions. They're, they're being asked to work extreme hours. The pay is not that well. And ultimately, the common characteristic we found is that they are all looking for a US-based opportunity. Okay. And so by being able to target these markets, being able to pay them fair 
but also above fair wages where they're able to support not them not only themselves but their family um, we found that every single one of them were looking for this opportunity so that is the 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 type of individual that we source um, and ultimately they are placed in positions whether it be front office such as being able to answer phone calls, okay. being able to help answer uh, patients' questions, or on the back end, helping with claims, with billing, prior auths, things yeah. of that nature. Okay. Last question so I can get you to the airport so you yes. can yes. get back to San Francisco. But medical practice leaders keep finding that there can be a revolving door um, in that staffing situation. Right. They have trouble training, uh, training people when they're in front of them, when they're face to face with them. You've got a global staff there. How do you manage that? How do you get people trained so that they can provide the kind of service and work that practices are looking for? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if I'm being brutally honest, this has been a, a work in progress over the last several years. What we have come to today is something called a edge EDU. Okay. This is a five week training course covering the high level of US-based healthcare, starting with HIPAA compliancy, medical terminology, all the way to the specifics that they'll do day in and day out. And this has now become a certification program where uh, a candidate for EDGE has to go through this in order to actually be qualified to even interview for a position. Once they do this, they get selected for a role. They go through multiple weeks of client-specific training where we would focus on the exact tasks that they would be doing, the exact EMRs or EHRs they'll be working with, any other systems that they would be utilizing from a software perspective. What we have found here is that's led to a ton of success, yeah. right? It's led to a very, very high retention rate. But biggest, I would say, value add for a healthcare group is that they're not having to spend months on months on training and ramping someone up. Instead, typically that process dwells down to just a couple of weeks. All right. Well, Ahmed Donawala, Edge Health, thank you for joining us on the MGMA podcast live from the Leaders Conference. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. All right. <laughs>